Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Refuge from Narcissism, and this refugee video is sponsored by contribution from Julia. And Julia sent in a very short clip of, you know, to follow the the pit bull pity it theme on the channel. Now this dog isn't a isn't a pit bull. It's a cane corso. It's different. Still a different difficult dog, but there's not that much that I could find on it mauling or maiming kids. But the, this type of video speaks to a subject I was looking to get into anyway um, on this channel about the pitiots and the pit bulls. And let's just watch this and then we're going to move on. Tell him to... Down. Good job. And stop right there, stop. Now say his name. Thanos. Louder. Thanos here. Good. Good. Now tell him to tell him to sit. Sit. Good. And how old are you? Four. You again? Four. Oh my goodness. Four going on twenty-four. Good job, kid. Tell him. Alright, and it's because it's a short, it just repeats. But what I wanted to get into here is the problem, even though that's not a pit bull, these are. Now, that was a canine company. This is another canine company. 2.9 million likes, 4.7 million followers <clears throat> on this. And what this guy does, he shows how obedient and how compliant pit bulls can be with, with training. Puts his children, uses his children as, you know, to, to, to work the dog. I go back to the center. Now, this is a well-trained pit bull. I'm not going to say it's not. If you go through his channel and go through the page, you know, you can see how well-trained these dogs are. He has videos of him walking around cities with these dogs unleashed, and they do whatever he said, and they do, they follow his commands. They follow his kids' commands, so on and so forth. The problem is... Okay, when you're dealing with pit bulls, you're dealing with 98% idiots. Absolute idiots. So, these idiots, okay, 4.7 million of them who are following this and telling them how fucking great he is, they all think they can do what this guy does. And they can't. See, this gives them carte blanche to say, see, look, it's it's not, it's it's how you train them. It's this, it's that. No, no. The average pitiot. The average pitiot. Then even the below average pitiot. Even the above average pitiot is not putting in the type of work with these dogs that this guy, that this guy puts in. He's a professional dog trainer. But what this does is it gives another what, what what pages like this and guys like this do is give carte blanche, okay, to the pity it to say, see, see, no, not see, stupid, okay. Look at the training you're giving. Look at the equipment you have. Look at the work that has to be put into these dogs. And these dogs are made into working dogs. By working dog, I mean attack obedience okay that is constant constant work to keep a working dog up the spec it takes constant persistent work work that the average fucking idiot living in a hoarded out shithole 
okay, is not putting into these goddamn dogs. What you get for reality is pages like this for reality, where it's one after the next of dogs, of pit bulls, mauling and maiming and killing children and weaker adults and women. 11-year-old boy mauled by a pack of pit bulls while riding his bike. Look at him. Look at them. Silent majority don't want pit bulls in their city. No kidding. Okay. Cop rider, when you arrived, I see a miracle right in front. Neighbor's pit bull almost mauls to death, mauls his child to death. Not a fatality, but a lifetime changed in childhood because of someone else's goddamn pit bull. And a lot of times it's the family's pit bulls as well. Oh look, this this is a good one. Justice for Blue. This idiot's pit bulls got out, bit somebody. Bit somebody here. I don't I thought I had this one pulled up. Here is your typical pit bull. Justice for Blue, okay? Oh look, sunglasses on the pit. So it's so cute. It's got sunglasses on it. Look. that died while Greene County animal control workers tried to grab him. Good afternoon, I'm Cheryl McHenry. I'm Gabrielle Enright, James Brown is off. This is Blue. His owners are calling for justice in his death, but Greene County officials are asking for patience as they investigate. News Center 7's Mike Campbell spoke with Blue's owners about what happened to their dog. And any type of thing for the pit bull bingo, whether it be a tutu, a hat, you know, or sun sunglasses, they all... They all fit under the under the under the tutu thing for for Pitbull Bingo because it's all the same. It wasn't just Greene County Shelter officials that were called to check this out. Bellbrook Police actually received calls about dogs running loose in the neighborhood and sent officers out as well to check that out. He was dead. He had a Good. catch pole around his neck so tight that he. Um, he strangled. He was strangled to death. Oh, wow. Chelsea York said she rushed to this street just a block from her house after getting a call that two of her dogs, including one-year-old, 100-pound American Bully XL Blue, were running loose. But she said an animal control officer trying to corral the dog had tightened the catch pole leash too tightly. By the time I got here, he was cold, and it, it's traumatizing, you know, like you should not have to see your dog like that. These sisters want answers from Greene County animal shelter leaders and from Bellbrook police who were also on scene. They want answers. The entitlement of the pit bull and the lack of regard for human life and the damages they do is, 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 is stunning. Is stunning. Weak people trying to project power through dangerous animals and then having the nerve having the nerve to demand answers when your friggin' demon dog gets out and starts hurting people. They were told someone called to report that- Oh, there's the cowboy hat. There's the cowboy hat. I mean, these shittiots, they're all the same. They all play the same game of pit bull bingo. Dogs loose, then later, another report that someone had supposedly been bitten by one of the dogs, later identified as blue. You were to catch that dog, and the dog is supposed to be in quarantine. He is not supposed to get the life choked out of him with a catch pole. She f well, fuck you. How about that? How about your dog went out and bit somebody? You can't control it, and now you're going to play, and now the pity it is going to take the moral high ground and tell you how it's going to be. This is the frustration with these people. It's another ism whether it be liberalism, feminism, whatever it is, it becomes about the lecture and the power and control of the lecture. We failed him. We reached out to Bellbrook Police and to the Greene County Animal Shelter about the incident and the female employee. The county administrator and director of the animal shelter told us 
We are aware of the incident that occurred in Bellbrook on Friday, and we are conducting an investigation to determine all of the facts in the case. The sisters have posted graphic pictures of their dead pet under the hashtag Justice for Blue. Good. The incident and their post stirred strong emotions, and at least one employee of the shelter told me that there have been threats made against them and employees. Oh, by other shittiots. By other shittiots. Remember, that other page has 4.7 million followers. That's how many of these idiots minimally are running around. It's a lot more because not every one of them is subscribed to that dude's Facebook page. I do not support any of that, any harassment or violence. There's no threats coming from us. We just want justice the right way. Chelsea York does have some specific things in mind when it comes to that justice. To be honest with you, I want to see her in jail. I want to see her in jail for yeah, choking. And, Why aren't you and, in jail? Why doesn't anybody want to see her in jail for letting her idiot monster dog get out? No, no, they take responsibility for none of it. For none of it. Dog. We reached out to Green County Animal Control leaders. They said because this is an active investigation, they cannot make any comments, and they did not have a timeline on when this investigation might be complete. In Xenia, Mike Campbell, News Center Sup. Chocolate. Isn't it nice wafers are having their moment? This is the entitlement of these people, okay? Of what their dogs can do with no regard for somebody like this. Hey everyone, today's Monday and today's Monday Love. But today's Monday is special. Today is December 5th, 2022. It makes exactly, well, at 3 p.m. today, it will make exactly 15 years since I was attacked by two pit bulls. Our two pit bulls, which our two pit bulls, meaning the family owned the pit bulls. The pit bulls knew him when he was, and, and look, when he's a little boy, this is what, look, look, look. People who allow pit bulls around your children, around your friends, around your elderly family. This is what you're playing Russian roulette with. And all the lectures and all that's the owner, not the dog, it's both, isn't going to change that. Oh, another Santa hat, although I think that's, that's put on there. Oh, look, it's who I did a story on already. Wife in critical condition, child deceased, two dogs deceased. That's your cost for pit bull ownership. This is the first story. 2003 dog bite fatality. Man charged with negligent homicide after his unleashed pit bull killed child in Baton Rouge. And this is what should happen to you idiots. This is exactly what should happen when one of your dogs, okay, kills a child kills and maims anybody you should be charged with a goddamn felony seven years old seven years old King news tragedy tonight a seven-year-old girl has died after being mauled by a dog charges may be coming for the owner of the dog paramedics ebr deputies and animal control rushed to help the child that happened about five o'clock tonight near the kindlewood road park that's off of who should two road near the amy river in the parish line with ascension news two's nick perlin is live in the newsroom tonight nick what are investigators telling you Sylvia, I can tell you EMS brought the child to Our Lady of the Lake Children's Hospital about four and a half hours ago. At first, she was listed in critical condition with lacerations and eventually died to, due to her injuries. We were there at the park right after paramedics brought the little girl to the hospital. It took animal control about an hour to find the dog and capture it. Just shoot it the dark. fucking thing. Ultimately, they used snare poles to corral it and load it into the transport truck. That was the mistake in the first story where the woman wants justice, okay, with the snare. They should have just shot it. They should have just shot it. I talked to the director of EBR Animal Control about two hours ago. He told me the dog is a pit bull and it will be euthanized tonight and then tested for rabies tomorrow. 
This is now a homicide investigation, and it has hit investigators hard. East Baton Rouge Sheriff Sid Gotro released a statement tonight saying, This is an awful, heartbreaking tragedy. My heart goes out to this family, and they will remain in my prayers. We've asked the sheriffs... It's a tragedy and a murder. It's both. It's a tragedy and a murder office about potential charges, but as of now, they couldn't elaborate. East Baton Rouge Parish has a leash law in place stating dogs must be confined at all times, either in the owner's home or fenced yard or on a leash no longer than six feet. Leash laws are pointless for idiots because they can't control them, and there's always going to be an excuse. We should learn much more about this tomorrow. Reporting live in the newsroom tonight, Nick Perlin, WBRZ News 2. A statement from the family's attorney, Chuck Ward, Samuel Chuck Ward Jr. of Ward, Ward Law, says in part, this particular canine has been reported to authorities on previous occasions. Ward added, East Baton Rouge is no stranger to problems with pit bull proliferation. In 2006, the parish failed to pass breed-specific regulations of pit bull canines. The data shows that in 2007, 56 pit bulls accounted for 61% of reported dangerous dog incidents with the highest being rot with the highest being rottweilers with 4 with the I'm sorry with the next highest being rottweilers with 4 so 4 watt rottweilers at a 56 pit bull compared to 56 pit bulls and I promise you the ones with rottweilers involved there were pit bulls there too there were gang attacks. It's never the first time. It's never the first time because pitiots put their own power and their dogs in, ahead of human life. That's what they what that's what they value. So let's look at some numbers here of what of what I'm talking about. These are the dog bite statistics. Okay, and this might take a while to get through, but we're going to do it. 2020 U.S. dog bite fatality statistics. Fatal dog attack statistics. Dogs, dogbites.org <clears throat> recorded 46 fatal dog attacks in 2020. Pitbulls contributed to 72%, 33 of these deaths, over 16 times higher than any other dog breed. During this pandemic year, media reports of fatal dog ma maulings fell by 45% because people aren't outside. So the ones getting attacked are more than likely being attacked by their own dogs or their neighbor's dog. But during a pandemic, which started, the lockdown started in March, people aren't allowed outside. They're going to they're gonna decrease a little bit. In response, our nonprofit sent out 30 FOIAs those are Freedom of Information Acts, to various offices and uncovered six unreported deaths in 2020, the last time the CDC collected breed data about dogs involved in fatal human attacks was 1998. Pit bulls have killed over 440 Americans since. 46 U.S. dog bite-related fatalities occurred in 2020 despite being regulated in military housing areas in over 900 cities. Pit bulls contributed to 72%, 33% of this death. Pit bulls make up about 6.2% 6 of the total U.S. dog population. So 6.2% of the dogs are committing 72% of the fatalities. During a 16-year period of 2005 to 2020, canines killed 568 Americans. Two dog breeds, pit bulls 308, Rottweilers 551, contributed to 76%, 431, 431 of these deaths. 37 different dog breeds were involved in the remaining dog fatal dog maulings, fatal dog maulings. In 2020, the combination of Pit bulls, 33, and ad additional bull breeds, 4, and Mastiff-style guard dogs and war dogs, 3. The types used to create baiting bull breeds and fighting breeds accounted for 87% of all dog bite-related deaths. 
This year's release includes statistics from our 16-year data set from Jan 1, 2005 to December 31st, 2020. Canines killed 568 Americans. Pit bulls contributed to 67%. 380 of these deaths combined, pit bulls and Rottweilers. 51 contributed to 76%. 431 attacks resulting in death. And this is only, this is only counting death attacks. The guy with his face ripped off and the mother holding his child, those, they lived. So they don't count in these statistics. They're in other statistics, not in these statistics. And how are there unreported, how are there unreported deaths by Cana? How is that possible? Because the idiot hides the dogs. They cover it up. While Mastiff-style guard dogs and war dogs are added, the types used to create baiting a bull of the small group of 84%, okay. In discussion notes, we examine 2020 trends. Over the summer, fall months, we hope to update the combined year to include the 16-year data set. Dogbites.org, during 2020, new trends arose, including a rise of reported fatal dog attacks without breed data, despite many of these dogs being taken into custody and the rise of unreported fatal dog attacks. Hmm. So they're not even admitted. So what, you're, what they're saying is you got pit bull attacks that even, even the animal services people are not reporting as pit bull attacks. Bull breed attacks surge. Bull breed attacks surge in 2020, as as did multi victim attacks, a new tracking car- category, and adult males killed by dogs. Multi dog attack involving two or more dogs fell in 2020, but a fade but fatal pack attacks involving four or more dogs increased. Besides COVID 19 lockdowns. A single year of dog bite fatalities may or may not indicate new trends. This is in addition to the COVID-19 pandemic, which forced behavior changes upon many Americans. Given the small number of fatal dog maulings in any single year, it's unknown which parts of our 2020 data, if any, can be seen as a reflection of COVID-19. One would expect to see a rise in family dog attacks and a reduction of uh, a reduction in in if in it off property attacks both aspects did occur in 2020 without any significant oh, unreported deaths and breeds our nonprofit uncovered six fully or initially unreported dog bite fatalities that occurred in 2020 for each of these deaths we also confirmed the breed of the dog involved Along with discovering six deaths with breed data, we obtained breed data in four other deaths, case count 10. Of media reports reported deaths, five cases had total unreleased data breed. Thus, there was a total of 15 deaths, 33% of deaths that otherwise would not have breed data and had, had we not followed up with the FOIAs. So they're just not reporting. They're they're having deaths, but the states are not reporting them as pit bulls. The animal control people are not reporting them as pit bulls. Given the high number of fatal dog attacks with no breed data in 2020, we analyzed the characteristics of them, case count nine, to see if there were any commonalities. There were primarily adult females killed in pack attacks. We also examined the characteristics of unreported fatal attacks from 2005 to 2020, case count 18, that we have uncovered in FOIAs over the last decade. There were commonalities in this data too, including all deaths involving bull breeds. Characteristics of reported fatal attacks with no breed data in 2020, total case count nine. The most likely fatal dog account attack with no breed data reported in 2020 involved the female greater than 36 years old killed by a pack of four or more dogs six of nine cases likely involving pit bulls and largely occurred in southern united states in a rural area of the six fatal pack attacks 100 percent of the victims were females greater than 36 years old 
and after research and FOIA requests, 50% of the cases, three of six involved pit bulls, involved pit bulls. Most attacks occurred in the southern United States, 67%, four of six in rural areas. The three other cases include one infant killed by a dog in military housing in Hawaii, one teenager killed by two or more dogs in rural Kentucky, and one senior citizen killed by a family pit bull in Florida whose owner had four adult pit bulls in the household and nine pit bull puppies. Of the 568 people killed by dogs since 2015, since 2005, only 15% involved a pack of four or more dogs under the conditions of this small subset, pack attacks weighed in at 67%. Characteristics of unreported fatal dog attacks, 2005 to 2020, 18 total cases. The most likely unreported fatal dog attack from 2005 to 2020 is an adult older than 40 years old, killed by a single or pair of family pit bulls in a city area in an anti-BSL state, a state with a preemption law pro prohibiting local governments from enacting breed specific laws. BSL is a breed specific law. So unfortunately I live in a state that has you can't you can't pass a breed specific law. Okay? And there's a lot of states like that where you're not even allowed to ban pit bulls because they're breed specific. 78% 14 of 18 victims were older than 40 years old, 83% 15 cases involved pit bulls, and of that 73%, 11 of 15 involved a single pair of family pit bulls attacking. 83% of attacks occurred in city area, 15 of 18, and 67% 12 occurred in anti-BSL states, primarily California, Florida, Nevada, Texas, and our data in our data set 12 of 18. So you're more likely to be attacked by your own dog if your dog ha if your state has anti um a uh, bully breed anti pit bull laws or breed specific laws that's what they're calling them. 94% 17 in cases involved one or two dogs, 89% of cases occurred on the owner's property, and there was a slight predominance of male victims, 56%. Despite, <clears throat> despite the strange pandemic year of 2020 for over a decade, our FOIAs have consistently revealed that pit bull breeds are most likely to be involved in unreported lethal attacks. Hmm. Because pity its work for animal control too. Pity its work in, in state government. Pidiots work get elected, unfortunately. They're pidiots everywhere. And what's scary is for an elected official who's a pidiot is being an elected official is not enough power for them. They also need to control you through their dangerous, fucked up demon dogs. These 18 unreported deaths include pit bulls involved in 15 deaths, American Bulldogs and Bull Terrier, one, and two other breeds participated in this attack. One mixed breed, one shepherd mix. Our data set contains little evidence that fatal attacks by other breeds are going undetected, which means they're hiding the numbers. They're hiding the numbers. Non-bull breed deaths in 2020. 2020 marks a year where so many different bull breeds inflicted, inflicted a fatal attack that we had to use different language in our statistics. In 2020, the combination of pit bulls, 33, additional bull breeds, 4, and when our breed was known, only three deaths did not involve bull breed or mastiff type dogs. Those three deaths included a single German Shepherd attributed to two deaths and a single Bel uh, Belgian Milanos, one death. All other deaths involved pit bull breeds and mastiff style dogs. These breeds include pit bulls involved in 33 deaths, American bulldogs involved in two deaths, mastiff bull mastiff involved in two deaths, American bully mist involved in one death, a bull terrier involved in one death, and a cane and a cane corso pit bull mix involved in one death. Oh, well, that's how we started with a cane corso. 
When the breed was known, every single adult victim, 25, greater than 25 years old, 24 cases, was killed by one of these pit bull breeds or mastiff style dogs. During 2020, there were no recorded Rottweiler inflicted dog bite fatalities tracking new categories in 2020 we officially began multi-victim dog fatalities multi-victim fatal dog attacks 15 percent seven percent of fatal dog attacks involved dogs injuring additional people at the scene in this carry category 71 percent five of 70 attacks involved injuring two or more people beyond the person killed 86 percent six of the attacks required these victims to be treated at a hospital and 100 percent of these attacks were carried out by pit bulls seven of which 86 percent involved a single or pair of family pit bulls attacking household members 86 percent six to seven Attacks resulted in multiple adult victims greater than 19 years old, and one attack involved two adults severely injured while protecting a baby. Keep bringing these things into your house and lecturing everybody else about it. Keep going. Keep going because you're sitting on time bombs. They might go off. They might not. In 2020, we also began tracking deviant habitual behaviors, lar largely using criteria from Barnes and Boat, from Barnes and Boat, Boat 2006, repeated animal control violations, aggressive crimes, drugs, alcohol, domest domestic violence, crimes involving children and firearms, and when an argument preceded a fatal attack. Notably, over half of the multi-victim attacks, 57%, four of seven fell into this category. Over 20%, nine of 46 of dog bite fatalities in 2020 fell into this new category. All nine cases involved pit bulls. Unlike Barnes and Boat, who examined dog owners within one country in Ohio by primarily accessing databases, there are no national databases. These areas are rarely mentioned in news reports unless police release details like fourth call to this home in the past five years. So we have to strongly su su suspect this deviant behavior as we did of Benjamin Spence, who had a significant rap sheet. And it's far from a perfect system, but the data is too part important to ignore. So what they're saying is 57% of these have, are, are, 57% of these people are fucked up on drugs, have problems, okay? It's not good. It's not good. Okay. Rise in male deaths in 2020. Since 2018, we have been tracking the increase of adult females greater than 30 killed by dogs, primarily pit bulls. In 2020, we saw a rise in adult males killed by pit bulls because more adult males were home. That's why. That's why. All males greater than 25 years old killed by dogs in 2020. 12 deaths were killed by pit bulls, except for a 70-year-old Frederick Shue, who was killed by his known aggressive mastiff named Thor. <laughs> they, they get off on the power, and now the thing turned and killed them. Sorry. In fact, three male victims aged 25, 26, and 27, all rare, rare ages, in fatal dog maulings were fatally attacked by pit bulls in 2020. Stunningly, two of those deaths resulted in the rarest of all criminal charges, second-degree murder charges for using the dog as a dangerous weapon. This type of charge is so rare we only know of one other case, the death of Angela Dolly Kaplan in 1992. Jeffrey Mann was convicted of murder for holding Kaplan down while his pit bull inflicted over 100 bites to her. In 2018, we wrote to the Ohio Parole Board to ensure Mann stayed in prison. His parole was again denied. November In November, Benjamin Spence was charged with second-degree murder for ordering his pit bulls to attack 26-year-old Chris Wickham. Spence was also charged with assault with a deadly weapon after he threw a TV set at Wickham, nearly hitting his head. While Wickham lay dying on the ground from his injuries inflicted by Spence's three pit bulls, court records show that the plea cut off that the plea cut off date for Spence is September 9, 2021. Jury trial is scheduled for October 2021. 
multiple dog attacks fall. Attacks inflicted by multiple dogs fell in 2020 to 43%. 20 dropping below the 15-year average of 47. Multi-dog attacks involving two or more pit bulls accounted for 70%. 14 of 20 of the attacks, attacks inflicted by single dogs accounted for 57%. 27% of all dog bite fatalities, notably a pack Notably, pack attacks involving four or more dogs accounted for 17% of all deaths, which is slightly above the 15-year average of 14.6%, despite COVID-19 restrictions. Fatal pack attacks did not diminish in 2020. The chart depicting 16 years of multi-dog attacks shows a steep plunge in 2018. There is no rhyme, be no, there may be no rhyme or reason. However, given what is known about unreported fatalities, there could be undetected fatalities during 2018 and 2019 involving a pair of family pit bulls. We did not discover one of those cases already, the death of elderly Coco in Florida. Those two family pit bulls viciously attacked three adult family members, hospitalizing all three. Coco did not survive. Summary. Overall dog bite fatalities during 2020 were highly dominated by bull breeds and mastiff type, type dogs. When breed was known, only three de deaths tracked did not involve these breeds. Reported fatal dog attacks lacking breed data and unreported fatal dog attacks also categorized the year. Thus far in 2021, the unreported fatal dog maulings also occurring. Reported fatalities are down by 38% this year, January 1 through 25 through May 25, 2021, compared to pre-COVID 2019, January 1st to May 25, 2019. This year, due to the growing number of unreported dog fatalities, our nonprofit has obtained through FOIA over the last decade, we were able to identify common characteristics among them. The most likely reported fatal dog attack from 2005 to 2020 is an adult older than 40 years old killed by a single pair of by a single or pair of family pit bulls in a city area in an anti bully um, anti anti-breed specific state, primarily California, Florida, Nevada, and Texas in our data set. There was also a slight predominance of male victims. One can consider these characteristics when reviewing the missing adult cases of the 50 to 69 age groups we discovered on the CDC website. Despite adult victims leading fatal dog attacks in our multi-year data set, CDC Wonder data shows that many more adult deaths are undetected by the media. The CDC data shows 151 deaths in the 50 to 69 age groups from 2005 to 2019. Our data also shows 96 deaths in the same period, only 70 and, a, only 70 and older age groups also show more deaths in CDC data, 124 versus 91. However, some elderly deaths in CDC data are struck by dog deaths, which we included from our data set. 70, 2020, 72% fit pit bulls, 46 deaths in 2021, 16-year dog bite, family fatality chart, 67%. That's the end there. And this is just children since 1980. 262 children since 1980 killed by pit bulls. Keep lecturing us. <clears throat> keep lecturing us and keep sitting there with your dangerous 
which are dangerous animals. Okay? Because idiot, because because idiots put the value of their dogs over human life. That's just the way it is. They're dangerous. They live fucked up lives. The the numbers the numbers show it. And that's what it is. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you to Julia um, for the video and for sponsor and, and contribution. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like me to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype phone call, have a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the Zelle, Cash App, PayPal, and email links in the description box below. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Refuge from Narcissism. Take care.